Hey everybody, Stu here. Today we're going to be talking about my Randall RG1003 head. Uh, this is a $300 head that I got um, that I'm sure you've seen in many videos of mine before. That I, It has one major flaw that we're going to get to at the very end, but let's go ahead and go over what this head is. First of all, it's a Randall head, so what that means is it's a solid state head. Um, basically with heads you have tube heads, valve state heads, and solid state heads. Tube heads are, mean that they have tubes. The valve state means that it's a little solid state with valves in the preamp, I believe it is. And then everything after that is done with uh, all the solid state chips and all that. The Randall head is completely solid state, meaning that there are no tubes at all. So what's nice about that is you can knock them around a little bit, little bit more and not have to worry about messing up all the tubes and stuff like I have in my uh, beloved Hughes and Kettner. So um, that's good. It also helps with just firing it up. Turn it off, turn it back on, and it's good to go relatively quickly. With tube heads, why they have the standby switch on a tube head is because you have to turn the power on and let the tubes warm up. This has to happen. If you don't let that happen and you turn the standby on and you send power through right away um, without the tubes being properly warm up, you could, warmed up, you could possibly blow them. So this is a simple three channel head. Channel one is clean that you already heard. Um, pretty nice, I like it. And that is on the neck pickup. Over here on the channel one, you have your gain input and volume input. Now that's gonna be a theme with channels one, two, and three. With channel one, gain volume, channel two, gain volume, channel three, gain volume, and then you have a master equalization. And I know some of you are gonna say, oh, I don't like that. But that's what, that's basically what you get. I mean, for $300, you can find sweet spots. I mean, if, if you sit down, you work at it, you can find a setting that works best for you. So now that we've quickly gone over clean tone, the volume swelling. Let's go ahead. Oh, one thing I forgot is that there's a boost. There is a boost on the clean channel. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna boost up the gain a little bit. So let's turn that on right now and there you go. You definitely hear the gain on this. I personally am not a fan of boost on clean channels, unless that's kind of the sound that you're going for. I never really am. I like my cleans smooth and buttery. I like that. Now let's go around to channel two. Now channel two is when we're gonna have our our first dirty channel. So gain, volume, for the purposes of this, I got the gain jacked up all the way, volume jacked up all the way. So now that we have that turned up, let's go ahead and see how she sounds. Pretty mean sounding. That is the advantage of having a solid state is you can, you can easily get that saturated tone if that's what you're looking for. Um, if we dial it back a little bit, maybe at about six, at one o'clock there, let's see how she sounds now. All right, with the dirty channels, within the equalization, you do have a couple of options here. You have a bass boost, which was on, so now it's off. We'll do a test on that right now. So you could probably already hear, the that's, that's a big difference between the bass boost. Here we go, off again. sloppy today and 
Base Boost on. It kind of tightens everything up having the Base Boost on this when we're going through the Base Boost. And here it kind of tightens up the low end a little bit. There's also everybody's favorite, the Mid Scoop which has definitely fallen out of style these days. It has been on for those uh, who have been paying attention. They've probably been wanting me to turn this off and boom, scoop is off. And let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so it definitely adds a lot of mids to it. We have, you know, when you scoop out the mids, what that means is that you're taking the middle frequency, you're taking the mid frequencies, and you're just basically scooping it out of there. In case you didn't know, so scooping the mids instead of having that nice midi. <laughs> now, when you go ahead and scoop. Definitely more of that 80s thrash, you know, if you like Master of Puppets, you know. So, and then we're going to go on to channel 3, and something interesting is going to happen when we go to channel 3. We're going to hit our channel select button. There's only one channel select button over here right next to the input jack, and that's going to take you, cycle you through channel 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So when we go through here, listen. The odd thing about that, I think, from what my ears are hearing, is that it kind of tightens everything up when you go to channel three. Yes, there is more of a gain boost. Yes, I do have the gain all the way up. There's a little bit of gain boost, but it's not super insane. It's not that jump up that you think it would be, where you go, where you have that real shitty line six spider insane thing where it's just like, what the hell is going on? But I think in channel three, it actually kind of tightens everything up a little bit, especially on the low end. I dig it. I like that a lot. And this is with the gain at 10. The volume I did back up pretty much to uh, 3 o'clock. Um, it does start to break up a little bit once you get it to 10. I'm not even going to play it for you because um, I don't know how it's going to sound through the microphone. Everything. And then the equalizer settings, I have the bass at about between noon and 1. Um, this does get pretty bassy, and I really don't like that sound on there the bass boost is on um mids i have it about 11 o'clock mid scoop is on trebles pretty much jacked all the way presence is all the way up again i'm tr i do like sharper brighter tones for dirty stuff and then now we're going to get to the downside of this amp or the one flaw i should say of this amp which is this knob right here which is the reverb knob and as you may be able to tell from this angle, I'll have some B-roll later on. The reverb knob has been turned up all the way to 10 this entire time. The whole time. <laughs> to have it be so negligible. Here it is all the way off. Here it is all the way on. You can hear it a little bit, but it's not what you expect from you know, a reverb. Like I, I've had cheaper amps than this do reverb way better. Like they, so that's something that kind of annoyed me. Um, when I got this amp, I was like, really? 
especially on the clean. When you go to clean, you want the built-in reverb a little bit, you know, like. A little bit, a little bit, but jacked up all the way to 10. Here, let's turn this off. Same chord, look at a little G major. Get a little sexy on you. Okay. A little bit, a little bit. I mean, it's not, it's not like it doesn't work. But that's just something that, ah, uh, that, I don't know. I like reverb personally, and that kind of upset me. You know, to sum this all up, for $300, you get a clean channel, dirty channel, and a dirtier channel. I'm not even going to say extreme or insane, but you do get um, an extra channel that I think that even while there is a gain boost, I like toning, I like how it tightens up everything. You know, to me, for some reason, it just seems to tighten, especially on the low end when you, when you really wanna chug everything. Individual gain and volume knobs for each channel, and then you have the master EQ with bass, mid, treb, presence, reverb, and then you got, of course, your master volume. Um, you do have a headphone jack, and then you do have um, an input for your stereo media. And on the back, pretty simple. You got your power input, you got your um, cabinet speaker outputs, and uh, your send and return effects. That's about it, it's a simple, straightforward head. This is a great head for beginners. Pretty straightforward, it's a head that works. You don't have to worry about blowing it because you turned it on too quickly. Um, it is a 100 watt amp, so this is just fine for showing up to a gig. If you're playing bars and stuff, um, showing this up with a Simple 4x12 cab, even a 2x12, because most places nowadays do have a sound guy that is capable of miking up your cabinet. Back when I started gigging about 16 years ago, there were a lot of places that had no sound guy, they, had, they didn't have a stage, there was no real lighting, there was really nothing, no way of miking you up, no DIs, no nothing, and you basically had to set up, crank the volume all the way up, and pray to God people heard you in the back of the venue. But nowadays, you don't really have to worry about that, which is really nice. So, great starter head. And for 300 bucks, you get a lot of power and you get a lot of tone out of here from clean and dirty. So, I think this is a really good buy. You will have to buy a reverb pedal if you want um, reverb on any lead or solo tones because they dupe you with the reverb knob. So, that's it, guys. Um, subscribe if you like this video, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.